Hello, this is Riptide Hosting with a quick video to show you how to install programs on a remote desktop server using the control panel so as the program will be accessible by all users. Often people will install a program as a user instead of using the add remove control panel option and they'll run into permission issues. Also we'll cover a couple quick things on how you can share your drives, how you can share your printers, and how each user has both public and private file or folders that they can share documents or upload their own documents to that are not seen by the other users by default, as well as how each desktop is unique. So one of the first things people often want to do is install a browser or install a program. In this case, we're going to go ahead and install the browser Chrome. So to do that, a lot of users will make the mistake, they'll come over and they'll go, oh, I want to download something. And if you come to Internet Explorer the first time and you see this message right here, it's saying that there's security enabled that will prevent you from downloading and installing. So what you need to do is come back to the server manager window, click on the second local server option right here on the left, and as you scroll over here on the right hand side, you're going to see, this is the right hand column, IE Enhanced Security is on. When you click on that, you're going to need to turn that off if you're the administrator. And if it's on for the users and you want them to be able to install or download or surf the web very easily, you're going to need to turn that off. At that point, when you come back over and refresh, it's going to clear up once you're ready to actually get to something to install. So once you shut down IE and open it back up, now you're going to see that it is not enabled. So at this point, you're going to go out there and download only the install file for Google Chrome. In this case, we often find it's easier. Instead of clicking download now, we selected that and we're going to say download Chrome. And down at the bottom, what you're going to see here is a run option. Do not do that. You want to click save. Because once again, if you click run, instead of it installing through add remove programs properly for a remote desktop server, it will not happen. So in this case, we've already downloaded and saved this. So we can go to the downloads folder and see it. Like open folder. So now we know it's actually saved here. Actually, it's saved twice. So at this point, when you have an application that you need to install, whether it's Chrome or QuickBooks or anything else, you need to come to control panel and click on programs because there's no option to install right here. And the third option here is install application on remote desktop. This is the key for applications to be installed properly for all the users. So you're going to browse out to whichever location you've saved that. You're going to select the file, say open, click next, and it's downloading the actual install files. Once it downloads, it actually installed properly and we ended up here at the Google Chrome already open screen. You can click finish at this point because it did install and now by default since we installed it that way not only will it show up for this administrator's desktop but now we're going to log in as another user and see that it showed up there as well. That's one quick way to know you installed it properly is it's not going to show up for any user that already exists or any users that you create in the future. Now as we log in, we're going to show you the different options you have to share your local printer, your local hard drive, your local DVD, or anything else that you have on your local computer that you'd like to share out to the server. So you could drag and drop files, you can copy and paste files. So the key to be able to copy and paste files and share your printer is before you log into the server, you need to click right down here on options on your remote desktop connection. And here, you can see different things that you could save, like the credentials to log in. You can pick the size of the screen you'd like this to show up as, the quality. But here's the key under Local Resources tab, the third tab. If you want to share a printer that you want to print from the server and print locally, you need to select printers. If you want to be able to copy and paste from your clipboard between the server and your local computer, select Clipboard. If you want to be able to see any of your local drives, on the server as if they were a local drive so you can drag and drop files once again or open documents, you need to select it right here. In the case, we're going to show out the C drive and show you how that works. So here's actually a secondary user logged in. 
And this is not an administrator, but we're going to show you right now the desktops look the same, except that as you look here, you can see that the administrator still has everything open. Well, let's go ahead and copy over a, a file just by doing a control C and a control P, or in this case, right click something, say copy, come over here and say, hey, let's paste this in right here in the desktop. So instead of FTP or using Dropbox, literally, I just copy and pasted it right here onto the server, and I can open it and see it. If we come back over, it's not going to be on this desktop because every user has their own customizable desktop. Let's say there was something that you were saving locally that you wanted to go ahead and share out. The options here, when you click on this, you're going to have desktop, downloads, pictures, documents. This documents right here is your documents file. So there's a test page in here with nothing in it. Now, if you want to go ahead and share out something for your other company employees to see, you need to come down here under local disk, come under users, and right here it says public. When you select on public, you can now see all the different public folders that by default are shared out where people can see these. So in this case, here we have one public shared document. If we wanted to paste that other image in here because we, hey, everybody needs to use this, we paste that, come over here to the other server, and we'll expand once again to C drive, under users, under public, we'll see public documents. Let's update a few of these. So right now it says updated again, thanks. No thanks. So once we save this in this session, go ahead and close it, we can come back to the other session and be like, oh, public shared document. Now it's going to say no thanks. So that's a place where you would share your documents back and forth. And once again, as I noted, because we share out the C colon, we have a C colon right here on the local computer. So if I needed to copy some files over, I would expand this and browse. It takes just a little bit longer because it's trying to get a bunch of data in this case. But I can open any folders, select some different files, and drag and drop those up to the server. And this is so much handier than setting up FTP and taking the chances that FTP set up correctly. Because if you don't set it up correctly, there's a good chance your server will be hacked. So that's both the public and private by default folders that show up. The fact that each of your desktops are unique and the simple way to install programs so that each user can see those. If you're looking to host remote desktop servers in the cloud, we have several offerings from virtual servers to dedicated servers. You can go to our website, riptidehosting.com, and see that for virtual servers. If you need a complete server and more than three or more users, the best pricing is when you get a virtual server and pay the $7.75 per month per user. If you have one user, our $39 a month plan is a better option. On the website itself, there are quite a few options that you can price out with our pricing calculators. You can see remote desktop hosting right here or click on the pricing tab. And what's, what you're gonna see is once again explain what's the best option for you. Do you need one user? Do you think a virtual server is your best bet? Or even is a dedicated server? On this pricing calculator, you can select different items like how many CPUs do you think you need? Luckily on the virtual side, we always say start small and increase this as you need it because it's so quick to do so. What you'll find is once you selected, let's say four CPUs and four gigs of RAM, the base cost of just your virtual server is more than the price of a dedicated server. So we would suggest if you're okay with it, if you don't have some big reason to avoid a dedicated server, to check that option out to save yourself a bit of money. For each of these options, you can come down here and select which operating system you want, how many remote desktop users. It's gonna update the price for you, let you know. If you need Office added, if you wanna select any other options there. But once you've decided what you want, you can compare once again, ah, this virtual server, it's gonna cost you more at some point. You could upgrade and move your data to a dedicated server, and or if you know you need more than, let's say, five to 10 users, you might wanna go with a dedicated server to begin with. And once again, it's just a pricing calculator. We have several of the more popular servers listed here. If you need something else, we will price it out. And the same option is down below with a little bit different flavor for the backup options. If you have your own Microsoft software licensing, you're going to need to go to the dedicated server. And if you have something like SQL Server licensing, the dedicated server is going to give you much more bang for your buck because you're going to pay for four CPUs at a minimum. 
So once again, hopefully this video helps you understand how to install programs correctly on a remote desktop server that each desktop user sees their own desktop, which is customizable with shortcuts to let's say different programs they've installed or different sites or different documents. By default, they have their own documents folder. And then also you can share out there to see where you have public folders that your different employees might upload and change documents and save them to. And that literally printing is as easy as sharing out your printer, just like it is easy to copy your files back and forth by sharing out either your C drive or your CD or DVD ROM. Any of that stuff is very easy to drag and drop, even to copy and paste via your clipboard. If you have any questions, let us know.